Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this three-way split coffee swirl custom epoxy tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I started with a 30 ounce straight skinny and I took a pencil and marked off the center of the cup. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking painter's tape and making sure that all of the tape is on the same side of the line. Don't mix it up. There's a time to be creative and this is not it, but I'm just taking my time laying down the painter's tape, getting it nice and adhered and as straight of a line as possible because it matters. And then I'm just making my way around the entire surface of the cup. So you can see there that I'm just really making sure that it's nice and pushed down. So that way glitter and paint does not get underneath the painter's tape and make it not cute. Now, for some reason, I just wasn't thinking straight. I didn't prep my cup ahead of time. So I am just lightly sanding the area where we'll be applying the coffee swirl to make sure that the paint nicely adheres to the tumbler and that we can move into the next steps of beautification. So I'm just taking some alcohol on one of these shop towels and just wiping down the surface so you don't have any debris. And then I'm going to start to paint the tumbler. For the coffee swirl, I am using Chocolate Kiss from Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint, and I am just doing a like a light coat on the side that we had just prepped. I love this paint so much that um, we sell it at the Candy Page Boutique website, but it just has amazing self-leveling properties. It doesn't show paint strokes, and I can just speed up the whole process of not having to wait for spray paint to dry. So if you haven't tried it yet, run, because I love this stuff. But I'm just going to make sure to do... I. This only really needed one coat, and actually I think it only did one coat this time around, but if you feel like you need to, go ahead and move into a second coat. Just You can dry it quickly with a heat gun or just let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and it will dry on itself. You do want to make sure that it is fully dry before you move into the next step, otherwise you're going to get paint in places that you don't want, and again, I feel like this is a theme, it's not going to be cute. So trust me, make sure you're dry before we move into the swirling funness. Now, what I did is I mixed up about 15 milliliters of epoxy, and what you want to do is apply the epoxy only on the brown section of the cup. So you'll notice that um, when I'm not making weird faces on the live, I am just applying the epoxy to the brown place in between the pieces of tape. You want to make sure to leave your tape on for this step. Do not remove it after you paint. Otherwise, you'll have to just waste tape and apply more. But I'm applying a pretty healthy layer of epoxy over just this half of the cup. The reason why you do this is because sometimes when you're using alcohol inks on the epoxy, it has a tendency to displace it or kind of move it around. So I'm going to be applying a little bit more than I would typically do. So I'm, I use probably a good full 10 12 milliliters of the epoxy just on this half side of the cup and then I'm going to start coming in with my alcohol inks so I like to start with the darkest color first so the first color I came in with is um, teak I love this color I know like you either love it or you hate it but I just came in with the teak and then I'm kind of gonna go up from there so this is espresso um, some people say one's darker than the other do whatever floats your boat but I'm just randomly dropping this so this is really similar to just like those really pretty alcohol ink swirls that are out there and you'll see that I did accidentally get alcohol ink on the stainless part of the, the tumbler don't worry about it we'll cover it up then I came in with caramel um, just to kind of give it some more depth and then I think the last one it was vanilla not vanilla um, I'll have to click whatever the last color was in the description below because I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm just going to kind of let those start to swirl together. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to recreate a look that was more of when you first drop your creamer into your coffee. So you'll notice that I put more of the white ink at the top, even though I start at the middle. I don't know why, but I wanted more of like the white alcohol ink at the top of the cup and kind of look like it's like swirling around into um, the coffee as you drop it in. So this is just white alcohol ink from Pinata. And I am actually using um, 
one of those like nail dabbers. Um, I use it actually a lot in clay and I am just dipping it in my massive bottle of white alcohol ink and just kind of dripping it over the top of the cup. Again, focusing more of the density of the white ink at the top, um, just so it does look more like the creamer is kind of cascading down into it. Now, if you wanted it to be more of like the traditional coffee swirl that is out there, you can absolutely hit this with a heat gun and start to swirl those colors a little bit more. I just wanted it to look a little bit different on when I use it. So here I'm just very, very lightly using my heat gun. I'm not gonna use it for a long period of time. And I am just general, like gently, like just using the tiniest bit. So you can see I'm just putting it on just like a little bit at a time, then pulling it up, just gently getting the colors to start to mix together. Then I let that spin um, for about 10, 15 minutes, pulled the tape, and then it was time to move into this next step that you see here. After your epoxy has fully cured, you're gonna come in with the painter's tape again and just follow the line that you had created with your alcohol ink swirl. So it's going to be a little bit wavy just because we did put alcohol ink into our epoxy. So don't worry, we'll even it out, but just make sure that you're taking your time again with the painter's tape and that it's nicely pushed down so nothing can get underneath it when we go in to do our next cup, like couple beautiful steps. So what I did is I just kind of ripped off a piece of tape that I thought would be long enough to go across and I kind of lucked out. And this was not the easiest thing to do. I wanted it to be at a diagonal. So what I found was the best thing is to actually adhere it on the left hand side and then just kind of roll the tape up. And then I was happy with the placement. You want to make sure that the tape is nice and flat again, because you do not want the paint or the glitter to get underneath it. But now I'm coming in with Miss Lillian's base seasoning. I did use this on um, one of my previous tutorials. I absolutely love this color. I know I said that before, but I'm just gonna come in with two coats of the base seasoning just on this bottom, I guess you can call it a third, but bottom section of the cup. And this is going to be the layer for our glitter that we're going to be laying down. So with the base seasoning and also because I had um, a lot of alcohol ink already dripped over, I did need the full two coats of paint, but I did the two coats using my heat gun in between to make sure that they were nice and dried and then it was time to apply our glitter. For this step, I had been epoxying other cups before this, so I just had a bunch of epoxy on my hand and it was more than enough to do this section. So I'm just gonna come in and add that thin layer of epoxy and then I forgot to record it, but I came in with Winifred from Peachy Olive Glitters to glitter this section. So I'm just going to apply, again, a super thin layer of the glitter or the epoxy, then top it off with the glitter and you can see just how beautiful those colors, like like the orange really mixes with the browns so beautifully. I let that dry for about two hours and you wanna spray seal the crap out of this stuff. I feel like I didn't do it enough so I got a little bit of contamination that I wasn't happy about, but it's all right. Um, but really make sure that your glitter is nice and sealed before you move into these next steps because you don't want a coat of epoxy because it's harder to get your vinyl lined up, which is what we're going to do here. So you're probably wondering why I'm putting tape down if we're just going going to add um, printed vinyl here. And the reason why is it gives me a surface as reference that kind of builds up the other layers. So like the coffee swirl, the epoxy, and also the glitter um, that I can really run my knife against to get a nice sharp edge. So I'm going to measure, and this cup was about five inches around, and then I went with about six inches tall to cut my, um, vinyl. So I'm going to measure five inches on the back of the printed vinyl, make a little bit of a little tick mark and then come down to six inches. And what you'll notice is that I went over on my measurements because I would rather have a little bit extra of the printed vinyl versus not enough. And then it's just not cute and you have to recut the whole piece over again. So I'm just using my scissors just to kind of roughly cut this out. And then what I'm going to do is just, um, I was doing this the what proper way that I normally do where I just cut like a little bit piece of the back off and then roll it out like I'm all kinds of 
professional at rolling out printed vinyl, but I messed up, I overshot it. So you can see there, I kind of choked up too much on the painted tape or the painter's tape. And so when I got all the way to the end of the cup, um, stainless steel was exposed. But luckily this um, printed vinyl was from Gracefully Created and Miss Judy has super high quality stuff. So I was able to get it up without ripping it. And then I just simply laid down the vinyl um, without the backing on and it went down perfect. So just take your time, apply the vinyl the way you choose. And then um, I used my X-Acto knife to kind of go along the seams that we created with the painter's tape. And you can see I'm really taking my time to in my nails to push down that printed vinyl up to the tape as close as possible. So I can use it as a guide to trim and get those nice lines that make um, outlining or striping the tumbler so much easier. So you can see there how easily that comes off and then once you have all of your printed vinyl trimmed up the way you like it pull that magnificent painters tape and you are good to go so after I got the painters tape ready to go it was time to trim the top vinyl so I just use an exacto knife to kind of cut off the excess because if you remember um, I made sure that the vinyl was longer than I needed to. So I just like to hold my um, X-Acto knife kind of at a 45 degree angle and just trim it up. And then what I'll do after that is come in with my vinyl cutter. The one I use is actually from Cami Page Boutique. And I use the half spacer just to get it down enough from the lip of the stainless steel. So I've got great coats of epoxy. Um, and then also you can see here that I chose to glitter the top of my printed vinyl you don't have to it was just an extra step and I forgot to record it but um, I just used glitter glue from artistry epoxy and filled in that little spot in here I'm using my 120 grit flap wheel and just exposing again a little bit of that stainless steel and since I'm so out of frame I'm sorry guys I feel like this tutorial is such a mess um, but I'm just going to expose it stainless steel and then come in with my 80 grit sanding block and just knock down any sharp edges and then it was time to move into decaling so this decal is from Creta Fabrica. I thought it was absolutely perfect for this cup design um, but what I did is I actually cut a um, light like kind of the lighter like textured gold um, of the actual decal and then I did a dark brown offset and I thought it was so cute and I just love the saying um, it's something that I need to remind myself of daily but I just weeded the textured vinyl in here textured vinyl is always tough to get it to stick to the transfer tape but I love the hack of sticking my decals down to um, a Cricut kind of cut sheet um, her cutting mat um, to get the transfer tape applied to it and then to layer my next decal on top of it. So I just take the backing of that first decal with a shiny side up, rest the decal on it and line it up. So this one, I wanted it to be a little bit different where I wanted more of the dark brown at the top versus just like the typical offset. And then it was time to apply to the cup. So here again, I am just measuring to make sure that I can find the center of the decal. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of just like a little paint marker, mark the center um, of the cup, just because the decal or the vinyl kind of in the glitter wrap all the way around Halfway, so you can't see it and then I'm also going to mark the center of the top of the cup so that I can have a better visual for where this decal should go I then folded the decal in half and you'll see that there's kind of like a little bit of a um, crease in the vinyl and I just push that down and then it was good to go so come in pull my transfer tape scratch off the little bit of the marker that was there and then it was time to move into pen striping for the pinstriping, I just cut these um, pieces of textured vinyl at 0.0125 inches wide by 11 inches long. And I am just in here first laying down the sides of the pinstripes. So just kind of making sure and eyeballing it to where the edge of the out, like our coffee swirl and our glitter and printed vinyl line up, laying that down. And then finally, I will come across the center just to make sure that it's all nice and pinstriped in with the finishing touch. Um, one thing I like to do is just make sure that this is nice and pushed down on the edges. So I do overlap it just because I like to get them 
um, or the two vinyl pieces as close together as possible. Then come in with a super sharp blade, just pushing down. Um, so I just push down very hard, use the blade and um, pull off the excess as you see there. And I'm here, I'm actually following that glitter stripe because I don't want the vinyl to go all the way to the top of the cup again, because it can cost prickly bits and all kinds of uncuteness. And then I'm just doing the same thing on the other side, pushing down with the blade, removing the excess at the top and the bottom. And then it's time to seal our vinyl and we're so close to being done. Since we use the textured vinyl and I layered my decal, I always want to make sure to seal my vinyl. So here I'm just coming in with quick seal from Artistry Epoxy, just giving a nice like healthy coat over the decal and also our pinstriping lines that you can see here here and I let this turn and dry for about 45 minutes before I move into my final layers of epoxy. The reason why you want it to dry for about 45 minutes is so that it doesn't get cloudy but I let this dry moved into two final coats of about 20 milliliters of epoxy each and this baby was done. Being an avid coffee drinker I absolutely love how this cup turned out and it far surpassed expectations. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.